For most of my adult life, I have been trying to replicate the McDonald's hash brown. And guess what? I finally did. I'm so excited and it's so easy to do in the air fryer and you only need a few ingredients. Welcome to the Salt and Pepper, where we cook for real life using real food and we keep it real simple. And today we're gonna make hash browns, but not the hash browns that you put into a skillet and just fry up. I mean, you could definitely do those, those are delicious. But this recipe is specifically for the formed type of hash brown patty that you get at McDonald's, okay? So it's so easy to do, but you first have to start with prepping your potatoes. What I have here is three pounds of russet potatoes, and I do recommend recommend using russets? Well, because that's what McDonald's uses, so that's what we're going to use. Honestly, though, I have tested the recipe with white potatoes, and I'm sure Yukon Gold would be okay, too. So whatever potatoes you love and have on hand will be fine. Even a combination might work out really well, like Yukon Gold and uh, russets. A combination, I think that would be delicious. All right, so to prep the potatoes for shredding, we need to cook them first, or par-cook them, okay? This is going to make a world of difference with your hash browns. Do not skip this step, okay? They will not work out. I've tried, and I've tried soaking potatoes. I've tried so many different things to try to get that McDonald's-style hash brown, and nothing worked except this. So do it this way, okay? Save yourself a lot of headaches. I'm gonna use my pressure cooker to par-cook the potatoes, but you don't have to. If you don't have a pressure cooker or don't wanna use it, you don't have to. You can just boil them on the stove. You only want them to start to cook, okay? Okay, um, you're gonna be able to like insert a fork, but they're not gonna break apart. You don't want them to break apart. You don't want them that done, okay? So just cook them for about 15 minutes or so, maybe, maybe 20 minutes, depending on the size of your potatoes. And you can cook them whole with the skin on, which is the best part, because I hate peeling potatoes. Although we will remove the skins later, they're much easier to remove after they're cooked. If you're gonna use your pressure cooker, put one cup of water into the inner pot. I'm using the basket. You could use a tray, you could use a rack, you could use whatever you want, as long as the potatoes are out of the water. And then just put the potatoes in the basket. And these are, I would say, a smallish russets, okay? Small to medium size russets. If you're using huge baking potatoes, you're gonna need to increase your time a little bit, okay? So for large baking potatoes, you know, the ones that are like almost a pound, I would probably pressure cook them between seven and 10 minutes. All right, make sure your valve in the back is on the seal position. We're gonna turn the Ninja Foodi on, which is the pressure cooker I'm using. Take the time down to five minutes. High pressure is what you want. We will let the water heat up, pressure cook for five minutes, do an immediate release, and then I'll get the potatoes back into the bowl and into the refrigerator to chill. All right, once the pin drops, you can go ahead and open up the lid. Do this away from you, because it's gonna be steamy. And then just remove the potatoes, put them into a bowl. And now we have to put them into the refrigerator so that they can chill. What I like to do is leave them in overnight. So usually what I do is do this step the day before. However, if you're in a hurry, you can certainly um, just leave them in for two to three hours, okay? They don't have to be totally cold, but you don't wanna try to peel them and shred them while they're hot, or they're just gonna kind of fall apart. So let them cool down and firm up in the fridge for at least, I would say, two to three hours, okay? Once your potatoes are completely chilled, you're gonna remove them from the refrigerator, and now we need to peel and grate them up for our air fryer hash browns. So I usually use a paring knife or some sort of small knife to do that. I find that a vegetable peeler doesn't really work that well when they're slightly soft after pressure cooking, so it's just as easy to peel them uh, this way. Now, you don't have to peel the potatoes if you don't want to. You can leave the skins in, that would be fine, but, you know, since I'm going for more of a traditional air fryer hash brown, the kind that McDonald's serves, we're going to go ahead and peel these up.
any dark spots like that, make sure you remove them. We don't want those to go into our hash browns. Okay, so once you have your peeled potato, then you will use your box grater or a large, I'm gonna call it bore, that's probably not a cooking term, that's more of a nursing term, but a large hold grater. You don't wanna use something that's fine, you want these to be in larger strips. So the box grater has this side on it, and that's what I'm gonna use. And then just simply grate your potatoes into the bowl. All right, and by par cooking them, we allow them to easily grate. They are going to cook up faster uh, after we freeze them, and they are just nice and light and fluffy. So we're gonna repeat that with all of the potatoes. Okay, there we go. Now we have our shredded potatoes. And now we have to mix in a few things. This is going to help bind them together and season them up. And I'm keeping this very, very simple. I have two teaspoons of fine grind sea salt. If you were going to use table salt, you would wanna cut that down a little bit, maybe to one to one and a half teaspoons. Kosher salt, you can use the same amount, one or two teaspoons, sorry. So put that in. Now, you could add in other things. You can add in some black pepper. You can add in garlic powder, onion powder, you know, any kind of seasonings you want. Seasoned salt, it would be a good um, option. And then you would just either reduce or omit the added, uh, the salt that we just added in. So anything you want to do, spice them up if you want, add some cayenne or some chipotle. But for this recipe, I'm keeping it just salt so that you really just get that potato flavor. And then the binder is one and a half tablespoons of cornstarch. Just sprinkle that over the potatoes. Make sure you get it all out of the bowl. All right, there we go. Now you can toss the shredded potatoes with your hands or you can use some tongs. I'm just going to go ahead and use some tongs. You want to make sure that you get them completely coated with the cornstarch and make sure you mix in all the salt so you don't end up with salt pockets. All right, that looks pretty good. All right, so now to prepare our tray. What I have here is a nine by 12 sheet pan tray, okay? Uh, you can use any size you want, but keep in mind, you don't want the hash browns to be too thick and you don't want them to be too thin. So try to find a size pan that's about nine by 12, nine by 13. And that's the inner measurements, okay, of this pan. All right, now put your parchment in and spritz with some oil. It does not matter what kind of oil you use. I'm using avocado oil. You want to put a good couple of teaspoons down and then take some sort of a brush and brush it all over the parchment paper where it sits in the pan at least. What this is going to do is coat the potatoes on the bottom with a little bit of oil. That way, when we're done freezing and cutting them, we don't have to oil them before we air fry them. It works out beautifully. All right, then go ahead and dump in your potato mixture. And then we just simply press it into the pan. It's that easy. So you wanna make sure you have it in an even layer because if it's uneven, you're gonna have uneven hash browns, right? So I just sort of try to spread it all the way around and then make sure it's as even as possible and all the way to these corners. Okay, now you want to press it down, okay? Press the mixture down so that the potatoes sort of bind together. Let me move this around so you can see that side, okay? I like to really get the edges down so that everything's nice and clean when we go to cut the hash browns. All right, there we go. Now, pop these into the freezer for about two 
three hours, okay? You don't need them frozen solid, but you want them to be frozen enough that you can lift them up and cut them into your hash brown shapes. Now, you could also put them in overnight if you wanted to, and then proceed with the next step the next day. But I'm gonna do this all in one day, okay? So I'm gonna pop them in the freezer for about two to three hours. So once the shredded potatoes have been in the freezer for a couple of hours, I mean, you want them firm, but they don't have to be frozen solid. Then what I like to do is take them off. See how they're holding up. If they weren't frozen, they would just be kind of flopping over. Take them off the tray for now. That's just gonna make it easier for you to cut them. I leave them right on the parchment paper. And then you can decide how you wanna cut them, okay? It doesn't really matter. If you wanted them to be round for, let's say, sandwiches, you could use a cookie cutter and go down and cut them that way. But what I like to do is just use a knife and make them into rectangles, okay? Um, that way you won't have any waste. So. You could do this any way you want. You can make them really small. You could make them bigger. However you want to serve them is perfectly fine, okay? And I don't really measure or anything like that. I just eyeball and go down and cut them. That's great. All right, now, you could certainly air fry them right now if you wanted to serve them up. They're frozen enough. What I like to do is put them back on the tray, back in the freezer, and then I'll leave them another couple of hours or even overnight before I then bag them up because I like to make these ahead of time and then just grab an individual one out of the freezer whenever I wanna air fry it. So I'm gonna put these back on the tray, get them frozen completely, then I will bring them out, I'll bag up some, we'll air fry some, and I'll give them a taste. All right, one last step before we get them back on our tray and into the freezer, and that is to spritz with some oil, okay? Again, neutral flavored oil, any kind you like though probably about a tablespoon for all of these, okay? Now, what? that's optional, you don't have to do it, okay? But I like to do it now because number one, the fat helps to prevent um, crystals, ice crystals from forming, okay? So they last longer in the freezer once we put them into our bags to freeze. And also, you don't have to worry about then oiling them when you go to air fry them. So that's just my preference. Again, it's optional. All right, then let's get them on back onto our tray. It doesn't really matter if they move around or anything like that. Just get them on the best you can. Then pop the tray back into the freezer for at least two hours. Four is probably better. Overnight is probably best. And once they're totally frozen, I'm gonna show you how to air fry them up or get them into your freezer bags for individual servings. So our hash browns are almost finished freezing and we're gonna get ready to air fry them. So the first thing we need to do is preheat the air fryer. I cannot stress the importance of this with any type of air frying, especially when it's breaded, but also something like these hash browns where you want the outside to really get in contact with a hot surface, which would be the basket in this case, in order to kind of start that searing process, kind of like you do in a frying pan with oil. Now, we don't, we're not going to have any extra oil, only what we use to spritz with. So the hotter the surface, the cooking surface, which again is the basket in this case, the better we are, okay, for this recipe. So what I like to do is use broil, which is also known as grill on the European models of the Ninja Foodi. That is 450 degrees. If you're using a different type of air fryer, no worries, just go on the hottest air fry setting that you have. Or if you have broil, because some of them do, maybe that's a little hotter, use that. It's perfectly fine. We don't care about the airspeed right now. We're, we just care about the temperature inside the pot. So hottest setting, no matter what air fryer you have, hit start and we want to preheat at least a full 10 minutes with the cooking surface in the air fryer. So if you're not using a basket, if you're using a plate, if your Ninja Foodi comes with a plate, put the plate in. If you have the basket style uh, air fryers and you have like a little rack or something, go ahead and put that in, okay? Get it hot and that's gonna help transfer the heat immediately to these frozen hash browns. All right, once your air fryer has 
preheated for at least 10 minutes, then we can go ahead and add in our frozen hash browns. So I'm gonna go ahead and just throw them in here. You will hear them start to sizzle. That means we are nice and hot. I'm probably only gonna do about four here in this basket. Might be able to fit in five. All right, close the lid and let's go to the air crisp and we're gonna go on 375. And it's gonna take between 15 and 20 minutes, okay? We will flip halfway through, but you don't wanna to flip too soon because if they haven't set completely on the bottom, you risk them breaking apart when you go to flip them. So I would go at least 12 minutes, maybe even a little bit longer before you flip them and then we'll flip and finish them up. Now for these, I just throw them in the baggie. And then I throw the baggie in the, in the freezer until I'm ready to serve another one. They are now frozen completely solid, so they will not stick to each other. So you can grab one, two, three, four out at a time. They are great for a make ahead you know, breakfast, especially if you're gonna have a crowd. You could even make these in the oven, okay? So like, let's say you did wanna make it for a crowd and you don't have a large air fry oven or something. Um, or if you do, you can use that, of course. But you could definitely put these in the oven. Just use the hottest setting um, and even preheat your pan maybe. So if you're gonna cook them on a pan like this, Put the pan in the oven to preheat for about 20 minutes before you add your hash browns on top and that's gonna help them brown up nicely. And I would probably cook them in the oven at about 450 degrees, at least to start with. And then after they start to brown and everything, you can lower the heat if you need to. All right, so these are ready for the freezer and these are gonna continue to cook and we'll flip them in just a few minutes. All right, so it's been just about 10 minutes and I've left it alone. Now I'm gonna open up the lid and flip them over and they are looking really, really good. Now what you'll see is the bottoms are much, much browner than the tops. That happens um, in this air fryer all the time. I don't know about yours, but it's because the surface of the basket does such a good job at crisping. But look at those, they're beautiful and they're staying together so nicely. Oh my gosh, they're beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. All right, let's keep on going. I'm gonna go another five minutes. I'll check the bottoms and we'll determine whether or not we need to go the full 20 minutes or not. That is completely up to you, your air fryer, and the thickness of your hash brown patties, okay? Because if you have a bigger pan, they're gonna be a little thinner, they're gonna get done quicker, okay? So use your judgment on that. I also wanted to mention that if you don't have an air fryer and you wanna make these make-ahead hash browns, you can absolutely use a frying pan on the stove with a little bit of oil and fry them up, okay? So what you would wanna do though is you wanna fry them to get them brown, but then you wanna reduce the heat. You don't wanna uh, burn them before the whole center cooks through because remember they're frozen and they're only par cooked potatoes. So play around with it. And you know what? I'll have some times and temperatures for you on my website if you wanna check that out if you wanna pan fry them. All right, let's go ahead and see how they're doing. They look just so pretty. Let's see how the other side. I think they could. I think they can go a little bit longer. Uh, let me let me pull this one out. Yeah, they can go a little bit longer. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll probably go the whole 20 minutes for this thickness. All right. All right. Let's take another peek just to make sure that they're not getting too done, and they look perfectly done right now. So I'm glad I didn't let them go the whole 20 minutes. So I think that was like 17 and a half minutes, I think. Uh, but use your judgment, they'll be between 15 and 20 minutes. And it also depends on how you like your hash browns. Like I like mine super crunchy. I want them to be like they were deep fried. So that's how I like to cook them. Now you can let them cool for a few minutes um, before serving or you can serve them right away. Either way is just fine. But if you do want to cool them or you're not gonna serve them right away, 
make sure you put them on something where the air can flow through so that they don't steam on the bottoms and get soggy. All right, let's move that out of the way. And I will pick one of these up. Look, ah, so excited. Literally, I've been trying to make these my whole adult life. And I've always tried to like add in egg or flour or something like that to bind them. Thinking about my mom's like corn fritters or apple fritters, thinking I was gonna make potato fritters, whatever. Nothing worked, or I mean it worked, but it tasted horrible. These, look at that, do you hear that? Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. They are perfect. Oh my gosh. I cannot wait for you to try these. You are going to love them. Mm.